everybody and welcome to Thursday's Board Game Breakfast Live. I'm Z Garcia. Good morning America. I'm Sam Healy. And, and people in other places around the world who no, might be I'm watching. I'm saying hello to America. Well, I'm all. saying hello to everyone else. Because it's the morning here in America. America. Good afternoon England and uh, Germany. Actually, and it's like in the middle of the night in England. The Czech Republic and no, it's not the middle of the night. They're only six hours ahead. They're six hours behind, I thought. Ahead. Oh, ahead, you're right. Four, four, four o'clock in the afternoon. Good afternoon, UK. Anyway, everybody, today Sam and I are going to be flying uh, without Sans, Mr. Vassal. Uh, he is still out of the country, so we're going to be enjoying ourselves a breakfast uh, that's slightly less hatted, let's say. Yeah, it's a the, the, hatless breakfast. Yeah, it's not hatless, but oh, well, that's true. But but there, let's say this: the colors will be somewhat more muted. Yes, more monochromatic breakfast. We will attempt to keep a sense of decorum when it comes to assaulting the eyes of our viewers. True, we won't make your eyes bleed. I mean, I'm gonna try, but true. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get to some news. The news. <laughs> All right, let's see what I woke up to today. Oh, no. Blam! News! Infinity Gauntlet Dice Masters. There are several new sets of uh, Dice Masters coming out. And we've got Infinity Gauntlet, which is actually going to be the biggest set they've ever put out. Uh, it's going to have, I believe, 150 new cards in this set, plus the corresponding dice. And there's also a Dark Phoenix set coming out and a Superman set coming out. Uh, Superman. Superman Kryptonite Crisis. So uh, these are going to be coming out, at least Infinity Gauntlet is, March 2020. As I said, 150 new cards. And it's going to introduce Infinity Watch and the Black Order factions. Uh, the focus of the uh, set will be characters that have carried the Infinity Gems during the comics, during their careers, including Captain Marvel, Black Widow, and Doctor Strange. Cool. The second set, the Dark Phoenix Saga, is going to release October 2020. That set's going to have uh, also a bunch of new cards. They're supporting dice. More than 35 new heroes and villains featured, which is amazing, seeing as to how many sets they've already got. Five. They've, they've got this many new ones. Man. It's going to draw from the Dark Phoenix series with a focus uh, focus on the students of Professor X, Xavier, and their allies and enemies. <laughs> and then on the DC side of things, the DC Dice Master Superman Kryptonite Crisis, that's going to debut June 2020. Bunch of new cards as well. And that's going to have 35 characters featuring Superman, allies, wow. and enemies. So yeah, Dice Masters is going strong through 2020 with some of the biggest sets they've come out with ever. They must be they must be really trying to follow <clears throat> after some of the shows that are coming out. They've got shows coming out with uh, Krypton mm -hmm. coming out now on the CW, and then Dark Phoenix is already in theaters. Mm -hmm. They need to have like a carrying case that's shaped in the like a gauntlet. Yes, and you just like fill the fingers with dice. <laughs> yes. And yes. then, like, a spot near the, the arm part of the glove to, to put cards. Put cards in, that's right. See? Who wouldn't want that on their shelf? It'll stack so neatly with the rest of their games. It's a... I definitely think Roy would put it on his shelf. And I think, I think every game should come in a glove-shaped box. And then you could have interlocking hands on your yes! shelf. Yes! An expansion! That's amazing. No, it's not. All right, let's not do that. <laughs> Next up. Talking about Origins Game Fair, which just happened, and uh, they announced there their 45th Annual Origins Awards. So here we got some winners. Root by Leader Games. That got the best board game, fan favorite, and game of the year. The Mind by Pandasaurus Games won best card game and fan favorite. The T-Dragon Society card game by Renegade Game Studios. That got the best family game. 
We've got e e Echidna Shuffle by What's Up Pog no Games. Idea. That one fan favorite family games. A cute little, uh, that one there in the corner, cute Echidna. little game. Are those Echidnas? Yeah. Echidna is a hedgehog, isn't it? It's a type of hedgehog, Head I think. Type of hedgehog? Yeah. Yeah. They're really adorable. Nice, big, chunky pieces. Uh, they're beautiful. I don't know if they're and it was adorable. getting a lot of table. It was getting a lot of table attention there because the game really looks good on the table. Cool. And then uh, lastly, Necromunda by Games Workshop and Star Wars Legion by Fantasy Flight. They won the best miniatures games. Uh, and Star Wars Legion in that combination got the fan favor, but they both tied for the best miniatures game. Very cool. So there you go with that. Next up, uh, Gamma had, while they were there as well, Gamma runs Origins. They elected, uh, they had their elections as far as uh, directors and officers and so forth. So they had that meeting on Friday evening in conjunction with uh, uh, the Association Customer Show Origins, as I said. That was Columbus, Ohio. And then uh, before the election, Gamma President Stefan Brousseau thanked uh, the departing officers and longtime board members, Brian Dalrymple, who had been secretary, and Aaron Witten, who uh, was the treasurer for the Gamma board. Uh, Dalrymple had been a board member of, you know, in many different ways since 1994, and he mentioned that in his departing remarks. So, uh, they also, um, they rude the absence of board member Rick Loomis, who was too ill to attend, unfortunately, but they sent him uh, their best wishes, and he, ha he was one of six people, only six people who has attended every Origins Game Fair since its inception. But he couldn't make it. He was unfortunately ill, and we wish him the best. Uh, Stefan Brousseau was re-elected as president with no opposition, despite the uh, res resignations over the past year uh, of two board members um, who cited Brousseau's continued presidency after an incident at Gen Con last year as reasons for their departures. But he is the president. Board member Jeff Tidball was elected as secretary after an endorsement by departing secretary Dalrymple. And then board member Marie Poole was elected as the treasurer for a one-year term to fill out Witten's term. Cool. So uh, lots of news there. I've always thought Gamma missed an opportunity by not having a green logo. What do you mean? Gamma. Like gamma radiation. Yeah. I don't think gamma radiation is necessarily green. I think we've been told it's green. I don't yeah. think it looks like anything. It should be, though. It's like saying water's blue. It is. It's not. It kind of is. It's not. When you put it behind a blue surface, it is. Oh. So gamma radiation with green screen behind it yes. is green. Got it. All right. <laughs> uh, next up. <laughs> This is news regarding the proposed tariffs, uh, and the news specifically is about a game publisher who is going to testify in Washington on the impact of said proposed tariffs. There's been a lot of anxiety, of course, in the board game uh, community regarding that 25% tariff on Chinese imports. Uh, and uh, this is something that would affect, of course, board games, board game components and accessories. Mm -hmm. And one game publisher has decided, well, they're going to do something about it. So this is Chip Boyd and Neil Gilstrad of Happy Gorilla Game Studio. They're going to head to Washington, D.C. to appear before the U.S. Trade Representative on June 24th. And they're going to testify about the impact of the proposed tariff and what it, impact that would have on Kickstarter campaigns and game publishers that are currently in mid-fulfillment and are facing having to pay these tariffs as soon as their game shipment hits the dock. Mm. Uh, so again, this is specifically about projects <coughs> that are currently happening and would get caught, let's call it, in that crossfire. Yeah. They, uh, they plan to advocate for a change in the tariffs wording that would diminish the overall impact uh, and what it would have, uh, the impact it would have on mid-fulfillment Kickstarters. Uh, there's no word yet uh, on if their testimony is going to be shown on C-SPAN or not, so we don't know anything else. All right, next up, Robotech Crisis Point. This is a new Robotech coming from Solar Flare Games. They've announced uh, uh, this new addition to their Robotech line, along with a small expansion for Robotech, uh, Robotech Force of Arms called Grand Ca Cannon Expansion. Uh, this is another head-to-head two-player game in that universe. The players are fighting for control of the Earth, using hand management, area control, and bluffing mechanisms in order to do so. 
Um, it says here that the Robotech Force of Arms Grand uh, Cannon expansion is a free small card uh, pack of uh, booster cards, and it's going to give the players more heroes and commands for the base game of the original game, the one previous to this one, Force of Arms. So, coming out, Crisis Point. <laughs> Next up, some very exciting news for me specifically, because I love me some Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, and well, there's a new expansion coming out. Uh, they've announced uh, that this one, called Dead of Night, is going to be coming, and it features two all-new scenarios, new encounters for every location, though no new locations per se. Uh, new monsters, new anomalies, a new monster deck holder to be a, a counterpart to the original holder that they had for a different deck of cards. And four new investigators to face these fresh horrors. And they're going to have, of course, of course, new spells, new uh, items, new allies. So basically more for each of the different decks in the game, as well as two brand new scenarios for the game. Uh, the first one of these scenarios, Shots in the Dark, the investigators are ta tasked with trying to bring peace to Arkham by getting uh, the two very well-known gangs in the region, the Sheldon Gang and the Obanian Gang, to cease firing at each other, all the while investigating, of course, underpinnings as to why this is happening. And then the other scenario on the lamb concentrates on uh, a fantastic character that I like very much, Skids O'Toole who is a, uh, a down-on-his-luck ex-con who has vowed to make his mother proud by finding ways to keep Arkham safe and protect it from the unknown. Again, very story-driven and very rich uh, scenarios, it sounds like. So there you go. Next up, Toy Story. Uh, new Toy Story games coming this fall from the OP the renamed USAopoly company. They've announced on June 12th that they will be releasing two Disney and Pixar Toy Story licensed games. The first one, a cooperative deck building game. The second one, a collector's chess set. Cool. Um, in hmm. this one, the one we're looking at here on the screen, Obstacles and Adventures, uh, two to five players are going to uh, take on the role of iconic toys from the film, of course. Woody, Buzz, Lightyear, Bo Peep, Rex, all those characters. As they work together to overcome hazards and progress through a, uh, an advancing storyline. It's going to come with six boxes of cards. Each one will be based off of a, a different movie in the intellectual property. Though there are not six movies, I'm not sure what they're going with here. And as the boxes get unlocked, then the elements of each respective movie or short, I guess they're counting the short films, they're going to introduce those things. It sounds very much like what they did for Harry Potter. Okay. The idea of unlocking boxes as you progress, mm. the game gets a little more complicated, uh, has more moving parts going on. Same idea. That's what this seems to be. The one I want to know about is that chess set. <laughs> I want to collect that bad boy. It's I mean, is it, I mean, how are they going to do a chess set with Toy Story? Is it going to be like, who's the king? Woody. Woody. Okay, who's the queen? Bo Peep. Really? I don't know. You think so? It's, uh, probably not Buzz Lightyear. Maybe it is Buzz Lightyear. It could be. I want, as I want all the uh, pawns to be Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> and the rule difference is that you can actually take him apart, and he covers more of the board. That's right. When he takes over another piece, he actually, like, Take, takes, takes off like, a piece. half of his thing. He moves over this way, and he still occupies this oh, space. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. And then, and then the Slinky Dog can will like, be, uh, like, a rook. He'll take, yeah, but he actually doesn't. He doesn't move. leave. He just, he ex just stretches. stretches, and he t if any piece moves into his coils, they're done. I like it. This is happening. Those rules will be coming soon to Board Game Geek. <clears throat> Copenhagen Rollin' Right. Copenhagen? Uh, is going to feature similar rules and a similar feel to Copenhagen, but with players now finishing the facade of their individual building through color shown on the, the rolled dice, of course not through drafting cards. In the game, each player is going to have a paper score sheet that's going to show the, the uh, colors, as you can see there, and the different shapes, of course. Uh, the tiles featuring two or three spaces, and the game will also include five six-sided dice uh, featuring those different colors that you'll be rolling, of course, and using. There is a sixth color, that's a joker color, 
and uh, pretty much everything we know is right there in that little image. That's all we've got so far. So that's pretty are much those it. Those dice over there? Those are the dice. I assume those are prototype dice. If I had to venture a guess, uh, this was very quick because Copenhagen seems like hasn't been out that long. <clears throat> They're trying to hit that wave, man. I guess so. I guess that so. Hit wave of rolling, roll, rolling rights, man. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Copenhagen roll and write. Another roll and write based on something. Hopefully it's good. Uh, we've got very little information so far, and I've yet to play Copenhagen myself. Yeah, so we will see. Definitely we'll let you know more news about that as it hits. But that's it for the news right now. Let's check out some contributors. Hello fellow gamers, thanks so much for joining me this week. I am back, I am extremely exhausted from Origins, but I wanted to say thank you so much for everybody that came out and saw me and played games with me. I had an amazing time at Origins, and I'm sorry we didn't get to do like Kickstarters last week and everything, but I'm gonna make up for it in the future because we have some awesome Kickstarters to take a look at today. So are you a fan of history but are looking for an experience that doesn't look like ancient history? Then maybe Company of Heroes, the board game by Bad Crow Games, might be what you're looking for, as two to four generals take to the streets utilizing actual miniature infantry, armored units, and buildings for a tactical fight for 60 to 90 minutes, as this game not only offers beginner, standard, and purist modes, but also gives you real-time gameplay modes, which has loads of missions involved. This strategic beauty here starts at $99. Speaking of war, Shalina Warren states by Bad Comet is for two or four lords of Euro engine building tactics as players will be selecting one out of six plus different game modes to play. You'll be focusing on building up your cities for military domination or a cultural enlightenment through peace for 30 to 60 minutes in this dice placement game that allows you to become the Supreme Emperor for $39. Next up is... Battle Stations Dirt Side by Guerrilla Games, which is for one to eight futuristic heroes looking for an RPG board game hybrid. As players will be choosing between co-op, skirmish, or game-moderated story mode set in this apocalyptic Battle Stations world. Dirt Side also includes double-sided modular boards for that panicked, I'm fleeing through the city feel, and plenty of dice rolling for all those Ameritrashers out there. The price for this story-driven game is $89. And lastly, we have Trouble in Temple Town by Too Fat to Fly Games, where one to four secret agents, aka the White Blood Cell Mafia, get ready to take on a microscopic battle. In this magic school bus style adventure, as players will be upgrading their heroes to take on Frank Ebola by using action cards to build up immunity walls and taking out those pesky viruses trying to take over the city for 45 to 90 minutes. Now this game also comes with co-op, competitive, and solo modes and starts at $59. Well, I hope you all got your fill of different modes and miniatures this week because, man, we could play like every single game on this list six different ways, it seems like. But if you want to know more about any of the games that you saw here today, make sure to check out my channel, gloryhound.com, where we will talk about all of these Kickstarters in depth if we would back them or not. And it is live, so you guys get to comment as well and tell us what you guys think about this. Other than that, I will see you guys all next week. Guy, the head of Honcho who owns Tiny Battle Publishing, he's smart. Because you know what he does? He hires the best designers, and in this case, the dream team of Lutman and Manzel, eh, to create games, war games, but disguised as like Euro games. Eh? Woo! Pa! That's sneaky! Thank God he looks like his mom. Tiny Battle Publishing's Dead Reckoning, designed by Herman Lutman, developed by Fred Manzel, and the artwork by Tim Allen. And what have the dream team done in the past? Invaders from Dimension X, Space Vermins from Beyond, Attack of the 50-Foot Colossi. This is a two-player game. You get a 11 by 17 inch map of Schnitz Valley, 88 counters, player aids, a rule book, a chaos table, zero dice. That's right, they write zero dice, and a couple of deck of cards. You know, it's like a B-movie. What's a B-movie, Pa? You're a B-movie.
So Schnitz Valley is in the town of Denny Springs. It's like any other town. You have the school, you have the hospital, you got some woods, and you got where the zombies come and grab you. This game is so easy to play, they even tell you what turn the zombies come in. And the Dream Team makes it even easier for you to play the game. You skim through the rule book, then you go to the player's aid and everything's there. You want to know how easy this is? Here's the sequence of play. One, you shuffle the cards. Two, you bid for initiative. Three, you do your actions. Four, rinse and repeat. Uh, how do you bid for initiative? You draw two cards, huh? And the guy with the higher number, he goes first. And there's combat in this game, obviously, and how does it resolve? It's easy. You both draw cards. If you're attacking with a weapon, you look here. He does one point of damage. You see that bullet? One bullet, one point of damage. The zombie defends over here with a minus one. One plus minus one equals zero. Nothing happens. How do you kill a zombie? Well, first, you hit him, and he gets a mangle token. Then you hit him again, he gets flipped over. Then you hit him again, and he's dead. When you're in battle and you so happen to flip two chaos cards, well, you go to the events table, and bad things happen. And you know, there's not much more to this game except lots of fun. Killing zombies. Dead Reckoning from the dream team of Letman and Manzo, Tiny Battle Publishing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week with more Tiny Battle Publishing. And if you want to know more about war game news, check out my channel, No Enemies Here. The news that doesn't hurt. Hey, 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 welcome back to another Gamer Stereotype segment. Mm. And today we're talking about actually what will ultimately be two different groups of people, mm. but they're both couples. Mm. The first couple is the power couple. And you've probably played a game with the power couple because they are the people who will not play optimally against one another mm -hmm. they will allow oh yes go ahead and take this area i'm not going to be over there but um if you'll let me have that area over there we'll work together but we won't attack each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um that's the power couple they never play optimally against each other but then on the flip side of that same coin mm -hmm. you have kramer versus kramer these are the two people. They work it out in the board game. <laughs> yes. Kind of they the are opposite. treating each board game as a therapy session of some kind because they go after each other blind, blindly almost sometimes. Mm -hmm. they, always, Bloodthirsty, yeah. they always go after each other. You can pretty much just bring your popcorn and watch the show because it's, it's nasty how... how vehemently they go after each other sometimes and it's like you realize that you have to go home together right mm. and it's like they don't care <laughs> it's like they they are meaning to do this but those are the two different kinds of people i, I brought up this more uh, this morning is the power couple they're always helping each other or simply not playing optimally against mm -hmm. each other and then kramer versus kramer they're always going after each other even when somebody else is winning. Which one would you rather play against, do you think? Honestly, I'd, I'd rather play against Kramer versus Kramer. Well, because they're going to give you an advantage, you mean? No, no. At least they're, they're not. See, when you play against a power couple, it's like you're playing against a team. Right, It's like there's, there's four people at the game, and there's three teams. Right. Um, single, single. And then them and then two kind of helping each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. It almost gives them an advantage. Right. The Kramer versus Kramer, at least they're attacking one another. So if there's like two other people in the game, they can also be attacking one another. Or, you know, if one tries to gain an advantage, the other one can kind of counteract it. I don't know. Yeah, I'd, it, it I'd rather feels, play against the Kramer versus Kramer couple. Yeah, I think the power couple changes the dynamic of how a game feels more than folks that are really getting in each other's way. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a conflict-driven game. It could be the card drafting. Yeah. And they're doing a lot of hate drafting. Like, oh, I can't have, let you have this card. That's that will right. not change my experience of the game as right. much as two people 
plainly and very openly helping each other out. That ex that yeah. does change kind of how I feel about what's going on. In the same scenario of card <clears throat> drafting or hate drafting, when you have somebody that's not hate drafting and they're just like, oh, well, I know this card's going to help you, but, but I, I, like I wanted this. to, but I'm going to let you have it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, right. That's not okay. That really kind of flips the game design on its head. Right. And it just really messes it up for everybody at the table. But... Yeah, I'm interested to see if anybody's saying anything in the comments here. Um, I don't know how to get yeah. to comments on this one. You needed the other one for that, I think. <coughs> let's see. So, well, here, let's let's take a look. Put it over there here. you go. All right, what let's see here. Um, Stop picking on me, says I'm showing. Someone. I'm showing my age, somebody says. Because of Kramer versus Kramer. Uh, I got it. Got it. He yeah. said it. I started laughing. Yeah, he, he, he was loving it. Um, uh, Kevin Owens' little finger says, Not sure why, but any chance my mother-in-law can attack my brother-in-law, she does. So kind of Kramer versus Kramer, but it's a mother versus a son. Which is strange because there's another one that we're going to talk about that's actually called the mom. Maybe that'll be next week. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, we don't play that many games to be a power couple. This is Board Game Fangirl. Uh, plus, my husband can get AP with a party game, so we are neither of these. <laughs> AP okay. with, a with a party game. And <laughs> You're only allowed to do that in code names because that game is almost designed to trigger analysis paralysis. But well, other games, no. One of one of the one of the, right after she said that, one of the next comments was AP with a party game. <laughs> Good heavens, you need to get him drunk was the advice that was given. Not sure I would give that same advice. Uh, let's see here. Kramer versus Kramer is hilarious. Uh, let them do get out while you win. Um, why well, not that just is the thing. You might have an uh, undue advantage, let's call it, because they are hmm. ignoring the rest of the table. And there's probably you know different variations within that. They're not always ignoring everything else. Sure, of course. They're just really, you know, they're taking the gloves off against each other. Right. Um, there's also, you have to really read the demeanor. Like, the demeanor of two people who are being a power couple is usually very apparent. They're sweet, they probably don't game a whole lot together, and they're being kind to each other, and you're like, Oh, okay, no. you're kind of twisting the game, but ah, oh. <laughs> the other flip of that is I is one of two things I've found: Kramer versus Kramer, where they they are going after each other, but you can tell they are having a blast doing it. That is just they they're just enjoying doing that. That's not a bad scenario to be in. I actually enjoy playing with people like that, who don't take that seriously. The flip of that, the dark, uh, you know, uh, upside down of that, is. You are getting kind of iffy vibes from these two picking at each other. And that is the most awkward setting of all. Jose Guerrero says, why not just gang up against the power couple? That'll show them. Uh, let's see. April. April says, when two people are just overly focusing on each other, on going after each other, I just sit back and do my thing and win. Uh, Jonathan McNulty says, uh, play style will all depend on how well rested my wife is. A smart man knows when not to push things. <laughs> Couples make social deduction games a bit tricky because they know each other so well. That's very true. That's true. Very That's true. another way to go into it. Uh, let's see. Uh, April comes back and says, my husband and I are nice, nicer to each other when it's just the two of us, but in a group game, I'll treat him like any other player. Yeah, I like that. Right. So I will hate draft. We game together. I will hate draft if there isn't something good for me, which is... That's which, the way you do it. That's what you should do, yeah. Um... Uh... Game together says, I used to target Randy just because... Now I target him because he wins every stinking game. So, yeah, I'll Kramer on him. <laughs> I'll go Kramer on him, she says. <laughs> I like that. I'm about to go Kramer on you. I like that. That's April. good. That's good stuff. So uh, uh, my boyfriend re really doesn't like games, so I really play with them. Uh, so, yeah. All right. That's pretty cool. So which one are you? Kramer versus Kramer or the power couple? All right, everybody, and let us know also which one you'd rather play against. Right. If you had to pick one of the two. Yep, yep, yep. Let's go check out some more contributors. Here we go.
Hi, I'm Jordan. This is Second Chance Shelf. We're still looking at Spiel des Jahres nominees and winners. Today I wanted to look at Finca. This was nominated back in 2009. That was the year that Dominion won the award. Uh, it was also up against Pandemic that year. Um, so Pandemic and Finca were runners up to Dominion. Um, it was a strong year of gaming, so I can see why Finca didn't win. But let's look at a couple things in the box to see what makes it special. In Finca, players are farmers growing and selling their crops in order to score the most victory points. The board has two main parts to it. We have the map here that is filled with orders that players are trying to fulfill in order to score points. But up here in the corner, there's a windmill. This is game where the game really sits. The tiles on the windmill make up a rondelle. And in games, a rondelle has players moving around a path in order to collect resources or take actions. In Finca, players are going to be moving around this windmill in order to collect crops um, and resources in order for them to grow. Players must move one of their workers the number of spaces equal to the number of workers on the space they're leaving, and then collect resources equal to the number of workers on the space they land on. So for example, this worker must move three spaces, since there are three workers on that space, one, two, three, and collect three lemon resources, since he landed on a lemon space, and there are now four workers on that space. Once workers have the resources they need, they can then sell them for the points. Well, there you have it. Um, I admittedly always forget about Finca, but when I uh, play it, I'm always surprised at how much I like it. Um, so definitely track it down if you can. It was recently kickstarted, so there might be some copies flying around there, but if you got a chance, pick it up. I'm Jordan. Happy breakfast. Hey there everyone, I'm Jen, the board game librarian, and today I'm from the page to the table. I'm joined by a super special guest. I'm joined by... Steve Finn from Dr. Finn's Games. I, I'm super happy to have uh, Steve out today for a special Dr. Finn's Game Day here at the Manchester Public Library. We had an awesome crowd, had all your games playing and going. It was a really good feeling and vibe in here today. I have to say, I think this was the only time I've ever been in a room and there's been six tables with everyone playing one of my games. Yeah. So I, it's really made me happy. Yeah. It, <laughs> Yeah, and again, I talk a lot um, on here and on my Instagram channel, too, about supporting local designers, and I'm really glad that we were able to make this connection and, and support a local designer and who has uh, two book games, even better, yes. monks and libraries. What would you like to talk about today? Well, uh, I could talk about my, my newest game, Waters of Nereus, has just come out. Um, it's the first time that I've had my game distributed, so nice. for a long time I've been... Uh, doing independent sales and I work directly sometimes with retailers and I've had a couple flirtations with distributors but this is the first time now that a game has been you know widely distributed so I, I fulfilled to Kickstarter backers about a month ago Neat. the remaining 700 copies have now all been sold all around the world awesome. and they are in different hopefully arriving in different stores all over the world and they're already on Amazon they're you know so they're around uh, Beth Sobel, many of you might know Beth Sobel, who I've worked a lot with. Um, so Pencil First Games uh, is, a, is a group of people that I work with to do Herbaceous Sprouts and Herbaceous, and we did Sunset Over Water. Thank you so much for coming out today. Thank and you. if you haven't checked out Dr. Finn's games, I highly recommend them. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. <laughs> 10 for 10 Wait is the usual game we play in which I'll set up a game for Tom and Sam and they will duke it out. <laughs> Usually to Sam's chagrin. <laughs> but today we don't have Tom, so instead we've got Chris who's going to be running a game for us two. Take it over, Chris. Go ahead. All right. So oh, this disembodied voice. Whoa. Where'd that come from? Disconcerting. Virus. Go ahead. <laughs> this is virus or Viking. Viking. So what I virus. did. <laughs> always virus. There's yeah. no button. You don't have to press. You don't have to buzz in. <laughs> so what I did was <laughs> I took inspiration from both of your favorite games and tried to come up with oh. uh, various viruses, diseases, fevers, and other ailments. I just called them all viruses, though. And uh, Viking words that have <laughs> turned into English words, and you guys have to guess if it's virus or Viking. Hmm. Luckily, oh. both of these, a lot of these words end in a, so that 
may have worked. I okay. also did some looking to see if I could find viruses that were particularly uh, prevalent in, uh, prevalent in um, like Norse or um, Norway, that area, just to okay. see if some of the words would fool you. We'll see. So Interesting. up first is... So are we voting secretly here? Do we need to do like a simultaneous nope. vote? You're both going to say which one it is. If you are correct, you'll get a point. If you are incorrect, you will lose a point. You All right. can end with a <laughs> negative end score. With negative points. <laughs> Roy knows this. <laughs> yeah, Roy, good job, buddy. Good job. All right, let's do it. Here we go. All right, the loser gets 10 spankings from the winner. So here we go. Oh, <laughs> that's more of a prize for me. So. Oh, oh. Uh, first word, Kala. <laughs> oh, and I obviously with any virus or fever, I took the word virus or fever off and just shortened it into its main name. So Kala, is it Viking or virus? Well, if I know anything about viruses, the Kala virus is very well known in certain regions of Egypt. <laughs> I'm going with Viking. I'm going with virus. Not virus. All right. Oh, we don't get to find out. It oh, we do. Kala, call, call to cry loudly, so. To cry loudly. Kala! Kala! <laughs> All right, I gotta get on my game. All right, Barma. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Bar mitzvah, maybe, but barma. barma. Like most of these end in ah, uh, which is great. Uh. Well, if I spell <laughs> it backwards, it says hamrab. Does that help? No. No. He's it sussing doesn't. it out. <laughs> sussing it out. Barma. 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 I'm going to go with virus on this one. I'm going to go with. Oh, this sucks. It's a it's an H at the end. I'm gonna go with virus also. All right, you're both correct. And I just realized hey. that font is very hard to read, but it oh, is a see. it is a fever. Pharma forest virus oh. symptoms include fever, rash, a muscle tenderness. Uh, fever generally disappears within a few days, but other symptoms may continue for six months or longer. I kind of forgot we were doing this during virus breakfast play. time, so I apologize ah, if no some worries, of these no disgusting. You keep, are it, gross. keep it clean. Various rashes. Dengue. That's dengue, man. Um, that's dengue. Yeah, I'm and that's sure. a oh, virus. That's a virus. Yeah. Uh oh, I'm pretty sure. The rest of us have read, Chris. Pretty sure. You've read, I don't read. Dengue fever. I watched the movie. Yeah. Come on, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a few. All right, next one. Well done, buddy. Mikey or Mickey. Oh well, that's uh, Mikey. That was uh, yeah, Eric the Red's cousin. <laughs> hey, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> that is certainly Viking. <sighs> you are both correct. So it's. I'm gonna muck. lose because I got the muck. first one wrong. <laughs> Moo cow what? Moo -mo cow dung. Cow -dung. So it's muck, yeah. It's, muck, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Mickey. All right. Mookie. Hey, you got some Mickey on your shoes. Nipa. Nipa. <sighs> Virus. It kind of seems like it should be, again, the age is not making me think Viking. Sure. But we keep saying, like, we need to change this up to a simultaneous vote. You know what I mean? That's up to you. No, nah, man, I'll just keep piggybacking, but I'll lose if I do that. <clears throat> Not necessarily. I will. I'm one behind. <laughs> but again, you don't have to realize that yet, just yet. Shush. <laughs> man, I'm going to give you that dengue fever. I'm going to go with, what did you say? You said virus? I'm going with Viking, then. Viking is what it is. Nipa means, uh, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Range of illnesses from systematic infection. Good. Uh, it went from asymptomatic or subclinical infection to acute respiratory illness and fatal encephalitis. I don't like it. Ugh. That is not. Is there any of these viruses that give me the ability to predict the future? Coming no. up. Coming up Perhaps. soon. I would know that if I had it. Uglyger. Huh, huh. Uh, sounds Viking, doesn't it? And hopefully Chad is helping me keep score because I think Ugly, I already messed yeah, up. Uglier is like, oh, have you seen Steve's Ugly, uh, a kid? You know, uglier kid. Uglier kid. Um, <laughs> that ship is uglier. <laughs> uh, it's Viking. It has yeah. to be Viking. I'm going Viking. I'm going Viking as well. 
Ugh. And you guys were on the right track. Ugly from Ugga to Fear. To from Fear? To mm -hmm. <laughs> you fear what's ugly. Ugly guy! <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. What else we got? Hindra. Viking. Virus. Sam is increasing his lead. <laughs> it is a virus emerging zoonosis that causes severe and often fatal diseases in both horses and humans. Oh. Oh. Nice. So if I have it, I <laughs> might be a horse. Stakra. Viking. Come yeah, on, baby. I'll go with Viking. Yeah, that's right. That Viking. is. You have you ever heard of the Trojan horse? No. The Stakra horse was made of straw. Ah. And it led an invasion. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it caught on fire. It's so before stagger, the people oh means to push. Yeah, yeah, Stakra, yeah. That's what I was saying. Push the horse. <laughs> Let me finish my you story. Push it into man. the city. I feel like uh, that messed up uncle who's telling the, the kids all these made up <laughs> things and then they grow up to be maladjusted children. Yes. Vendaga. Virus. Vendaga. Virus, definitely. Oh, Vikings then. <clears throat> You're changing? I am. I okay. need to catch up. It's not going to work. Viking. All right. I think I got it right there. Ooh! It yeah! Is, it means window, the literally, wind eye. wind eye. All right. Wind eye? That's what window comes from? Mm -hmm. Molluscum. <laughs> it has the word scum in it. <laughs> it Virus. It's got to be. The mollusk, we all know, is... So a various, uh, some sort of like juicy, edible, uh, you know, sea cracker. After you crack it open. Yes. And then you consume it with a tiny fork. Yeah, it's a, it's a and virus. And butter. It's right. the uh, should, an allergy should, to butter. You should totally eat this uh, molluscum. Oh, I got it. It's a skin it, infection it, it. that produces benign raised bumps or lesions <laughs> on the upper layers of your skin. So this is the so stuff like that you dip your mollusks in. <laughs> Ew, man, breakfast. <laughs> Are you gross? It could be for breakfast. Salatra. Or slatra. Salatra. It's a spice. Salatra. Delicious. Mm. Salatra. That's got to be Viking. I'm definitely saying Viking. You are? Mm hmm. I am too, but yeah, okay. It's another, like, pushing stagger thing. Yep. How many words they got for pushing people? Apparently well, a lot. Come on, dude. They're Vikings. <laughs> what do you expect? Slatra. <laughs> What's the other one? Rosella. Well, <laughs> that uh, is a, a, a perfume. Rosola. <laughs> Have you ever, there's a perfume called White Shoulders. Very nice. They uh, the makers of that all, also make Rosola. This is the one perfume it I smells put on like the list. tulips. It smells like tulips. Uh huh. It's a virus. I assume. No, no, no. What did you say? I said a virus. It's definitely I'm a virus. Viking. Then why would you the do Vikings such a thing? The Vikings came up with that virus. No. Check it. Ah! <laughs> it's a skin infection. No, yeah, skin infection. It's also known as rash. sixth disease. It well, we're the first five. It's a fever followed by a signature skin rash. Man, you got a lot of skin rashes on here. That's disgusting. I, you I had I found a particular skin on list. your mind. Rosola. <laughs> Rosola. For what ails you? Lassa. That's uh, the dog. The collie <laughs> that knows how to what talk to humans. What more? <laughs> <laughs> Someone has Rosola? <laughs> Uh, this is going to be probably Viking. Viking. I'm saying it's some sort of rash condition. Don't do it. It's probably a rash. Don't do it, young person. I have to say the different thing from you. You have your whole life ahead of you. No. I will catch Rosola before I say Vikings hit me. Oh. It is a, it is a fever. Yeah, see? Uh, Humans it, usually become infected with Lassa virus from exposure to... Urine or feces of infected rats. That's a good one for you to get right. Hope everyone's enjoying Fence. their cocoa puffs. Mm -hmm. Cocoa puffs. Oh my goodness gracious. Rithia or Rithia. If you put an A in front of that, Arithia, <laughs> that's when your heart ain't, ain't, you know, beaten to the beat. Maybe. Ah. This is the virus. Rithia. <laughs> this is uh, the virus. You're that saying that. Vikings, aren't you? I'm letting you pick first. I'm saying, I already have decided. Well, I'm, I'm saying Vikings choose. then. 
All right. Vikings as well. Yes, that is to rid, to clear land. To stagger. <laughs> it's to stagger. another word for stagger. <laughs> <laughs> or stumble, if you will. And, uh, yeah, that was it. So, either way, you're going right. to die. Did I win? Either you did way, not. You're going to die. If I mathed correctly, it is six to ten. Six, six points to ten. to ten points. Right. Well done, well done. I, I wish Rosola upon you. <laughs> Ew, that's disgusting. <laughs> May your skin rash in a thousand ways. Well, I, sir, am going to stagger me. Stagger you <laughs> in three in, different ways. In various <laughs> words. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for joining us for that. Very Thank cool. you, Chris, for coming up with that yeah, yeah. silly game, but it was a blast. Let's check out some more contributors right now. Hey guys, it's Nick here for Mental Health Minute, and I want to talk about expansions. Yes, expansions. There are some big expansions, there are some small expansions, but either way we can suffer from expansion fatigue. Oh, more of this, more of that, add, 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 and then we're wondering what, what does our shelf even look like anymore? Why do we get expansions? Because we want to pump new life into the game, because even if you enjoy something so, so much, doing it the same way over and over can get repetitive. Um, there are some games that I love that the strategy I've, I've focused on and I've got it and I'm like, okay, I really know how to play this game now in every way possible and then it's not new anymore. You need to breathe new life into it. There are two different types of expansions in my history. One will just be adding more of what you already have. Here, here's some more cards. You have a bunch of these cards, I'm adding a bunch more. Viticulture does this sometimes, they just have little expansions that have about 20 cards in it. Here you go, here's more of what you already have. Great. And others are like Orleans. Here is an expansion where you can make it a co-op game. Okay. And you're changing the fabric of the game and exactly how you're playing it. That's another type of expansion. I prefer more of what I already have because I like to put my mindset on something and get used to it regular and be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I like. Just give me more of it because it puts me in a place where I'm still convinced that the game is exactly what I'm looking for. Well, also, there are some people who love to just change the format. You know, I've played this game enough times to really get behind what it's doing. Now let's throw a wrench into it and change it a lot. Change it a lot. Add more spaces. Add more cards. Add more players. What do you enjoy? What is your favorite type of expansion? And give me an example of one of those expansions that really pumped up a game for you and breathed new life into it to make it worth playing for you. Do enjoy your breakfast. Hi folks, my name is Annie and welcome to Portable Gaming, the show about games which are fun to play in pubs and cafes. So today I'm going to play a little game that allows you to live out your favourite thriller and mystery writers, and that is the game Murder of Crows. In Murder of Crows, the object is simple. You're trying to use all the cards in your hand to spell the word murder. Once you do, you win. However, what makes it interesting is what each card does. So on your turn, you'll draw a card and then you will play a card. When you play that card, you will then take its effect. So for example, if I play R for murder, I get to draw a new card, and then I'll pass the turn on. On my next turn, I might then play the card E for Expel, which then makes players discard their cards and draw a new hand. And player continues on until you've spelled the word murder. And that's pretty much it. It's quite simple. There is a cool little mechanic, which is a wild card, which can be discarded to, to block the effect of other cards so you don't get caught out by other players. You've got mechanics where you can double player letters, so you've got essentially a buffer zone on top. And you keep playing until you spell murder, you read out the story, which is always either surprisingly grisly or surprisingly hilarious, and the game's it. That's it. So it's pretty simple. It's got a lot of kind of back and forth, a little bit of take that, which I know I've covered a few games like this, but I feel that's kind of endemic in the small deck game, is that little bit of take that. But that also works well in these kind of settings, because it's somewhere kind of you're just throwing it out there for a bit of, bit of daft fun, a bit of silliness, a bit of kind of arguing back and forth as kind of what happens in these environments, and that's all right. That's a bit of, you know, it's all in good fun. Uh, it's very small, it's very compact, uh, it fits in a deck box, in fact I had to get rid of the standard box because it was just a flimsy bit of cardboard, I know the second edition I think has a nice tin which is worth looking into, but it is fun, it is quick, it's cute, it, you can get a good bit of laughs out of the stories, and I would recommend it, uh, so that is Murder of Crows. Anyway, thanks very much folks, I've been Andy, and it's your round. Happy breakfast everyone, now last week I spoke about UK Games Expo and some of the games but this time I'm going to tell you about an event, the Publisher Designer Speed Dating. 
Now, not many of you will probably have heard about it, but for 17 designers, including myself, uh, we took our games along to this event and had 17 publishers uh, sit round uh, in a sort of speed dating thing. So we got into the room early. Uh, we had a, sort of a five by two, three uh, foot table, so a couple of meters, meter, um, to set our game up. Now mine was quite small, a small card game uh, for two players. So it fit very easily. The idea was we had five minutes. Uh, we'd be sat there and a publisher would come. We'd have four minutes to pitch the game, sell it, uh, and tell them all about it, why it's good, and then have a minute for questions. And this was rapid fire. They would then move on, uh, and you'd hope that you've done justice to your game. Now, it's maybe not as beneficial as talking to a few individually, because you can then, if they're not too interested, with mine, some just didn't like a two-player game. They were turned off by that straight away. You could ask them, uh, you know, what are you looking for? And in the the designer uh, publisher speed dating, you didn't just didn't have that time. But the ability to, you know, hone your pitching skills to meet many uh, companies and make a few contacts there, it was a really good event. So, you know, this time next year, maybe that could be you sat there with your game, you know, that's been floating around in the back of your head. But yeah, it's enjoyable. It was exhausting. My, I could hardly talk by the end of it, uh, but well worth it, even if it was a bit of a, a roller coaster throughout. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I'm Oliver East signing out. All right, let's crack open some game. <clears throat> Sam? Kind of surprise unboxings? Here's the thing, we don't have any boxes with a hidden game within the, within that box, so That's we're true. gonna just have to... Most of them come directly to Tom's house. We're just gonna have to open a box, but I want they you to add... to the studio. Like you've never seen it. Okay. Nay, never heard okay. of it. Okay, all right. You ready? I'm very ready. BAM! <laughs> Look at that! Slide Quest, the video board game. From Blue Orange Games, Hot Games, Cool Planet. Blue Orange. Blue Orange. Let's crack this open. This is a family slash kids game, which is, I think, a spiritual successor to their, what was that one called? Draw Quest? What was that game called? The drawing one from the same company. Wait, is this where you're like sliding pieces around and trying well, to... Well, this is like that old yeah, toy the little... <laughs> where you would like have a platform that would move. Huh. And like the, the ball would roll, but you had to be like, ah, 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 I got to get oh, it in the spot. You know is. what I'm talking about? Those puzzles. Ooh. It's basically like that, but a cooperative style of doing that. Interesting. And it comes with 20 puzzles in there, as it says on the back. What? Ooh. So there you go. That's slide quest there. Here is the, well, the rules are like incredibly brief. Here we've got the boards themselves. Check that out. So that's the board, that's like one of the boards. And there's 20 of these, as I said. I guess it sits in here. <coughs> this is so crazy. I'm done it. All right, so that would sit there, I think. Yeah, it looks like. And this, oh, well, we gotta take the white thing out, okay. What's it gonna sit in? Yellow things go underneath. Yeah. How do you know this? I ah! Woo! Look at this! So then this goes like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we do that. Alright. And then we put that in it. Oh, oh wow. that's awesome. And then we put that in it. And then I assume some of these thingies go in there. Like that. And then the one that has a single spot. Are you trying to get the ball in the hole? I think you might be trying. Is there a trying. ball? Yeah, there should be. There's no ball. Uh, yeah, over here. Look, there's more stuff. There's a little dude. He has a ball bearing on the bottom. Look. Hee hee hee. Hee hee. There you go. No! You failed. He's dead now. So he died. I think. I'm not sure how this works. Like that. 
All right, there we go. And then we've got little wooden pieces as well here, that which feature fit. numbers. What is that? Oh, it's a guy holding a shield, some pegs, a little heart, and of course, rules. Vernon, <laughs> Vernon would say this needs a paint job. Yeah, he would, but it's it does not. Um, I don't know how the game exactly works, but take a look at the rule book. Let me know what we're doing. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come on, I'll, I'll How to it. play. Uh, once the map's composed of a simple players position themselves around the board where they can easily use four levers. Uh, with four players, each use one. Three players, two players, he has to use. Yeah, so it would have to be like this for us or something like that. No! Um, the knight must succeed in the mission set out on the map in order to move to the next one. So you've got to start from here. Okay. Or, no, I think maybe you start one. from here and go this way. Oh, okay. All right, let's do it. Here we go. So, All right. I got to go this. Huh, huh. Oh, okay. Nice okay. and you, slow. You, you go move. ahead. Go ahead. You move this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, that's you. Okay, that's me. Okay, we got to try to get it down the middle there. Uh, you go. Well, pick up your side there a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Oh boy, this is the dangerous. No, oh. no, no, no. It's got to go on the outside of the rock. This is riveting. This is pretty crazy. It's fun. It is. Come on, little buddy. Got it. Dude! Uh. <laughs> What's up? That is Slide Quest. That's neat. That is super neat. The night. Okay, two ways the game can end. The night successfully completes the last map of the chosen game mode with at least one life left on the corner, and the players win the game. Two, game over. If the lives counter gets to zero, it's game this. over. The game is stopped, and players must start again from the beginning of their chosen game mode. So you can choose how many different lives you have. You can choose the kind of mission. There are simple paths, paths with dynamites. Actually, yeah, that says dynamites. Be, that must be these. And, uh, and there's a bunch of like, there's this gate. I'm assuming you have to get the guy through the gate. <laughs> there you are know? there are guards, and you have to push them into the traps. Oh uh, wow! There are numbered guards, the villains, uh, and explosive in two maps that require you to use dynamite in a special way. Yeah, uh, yeah, right so here. So there's dynamite. a number of different ways that you can do it. This seems neat, and, and that was with us each working two levers. Yes. If everybody gets a single lever, right. that is that's going to be You've got to do some hard. planning. You can also time yourself as a variation. You can do hero mode as a variation where when the light lo knight loses a life, he has to move back to the starting position. Um, and then there's a lonely knight, which means that you can save the world on your own is possible. You have to prove your dexterity and operate all four levers by yourself. Wow. I've only got two feet. Witchcraft. Something, something lonely Sorcery. knight. Something, something, lonely night. All right. All right, very cool. There you go, everybody. That, that is, is Slide Quest Slide for your Quest. surprise unboxing, kind of. But you did get a surprise playing Play of through. Slide Quest. There you go. All right, we got a few more contributors, and we'll be wrapping it up after that. Here we go. In the last two segments, I covered some of my favorite roll and write games, Welcome To, and the Castles of Burgundy the Dice game. And in this one, last but not least, I'll show you Gangstrom Clever coming up. from Apple University. Gunstrom Clever has got a lot of buzz around it. In 2018, it won Golden Geek Best Solo Board Game and nominee of 2018 Kenneth Spiel de Jerez. I really love it. I even have the app on my cell phone for the game. The app captures the game very well, but it's only for solo plays. The rule to the game is simple. Game goes for different amount of rounds depending on how many players. For example, six rounds for two players. Each round, the active players roll six dice and trying to cross out the boxes and combos as many as possible to get the most points on um, their own player sheet by taking and using one out of that six dice. Then the active player put aside the dice with pips lower than the dice that he or she just took. Then roll the rest, keep going until the active player gets maximum of three dice. With the rest of the dice, First of the players then use untaken dice to fill their sheet. More than one player can use the same untaken dice. There are also ways to reroll or do bonus actions. Love it, love the game. It is very addictive. 
if you want to keep playing this even on your own trying to score higher points it is like most other roll and write games games come in a player sheet pad that is usable only for one play per sheet however i usually laminate my player sheets so i can use the whiteboard marker and keep reusing the sheets without having to worry about the sheets might run out we have full rules on how to play video for Gyeongshan Clever on our channel, Maple University. So check that out if you're interested. See you next time. Hi, I'm Doug Jr. And I'm Doug III, and we're from Doug and Doug Gaming. And you're watching A Fellowship of, of Meeples. Well, a few weeks ago, I encouraged you to ask any and all questions concerning your gaming group. Which in return, we promised to answer those questions as best we could. If we don't have an answer, we will probably make something up. That's right. Well, we had a question that comes from Fred, and Fred's gaming group has grown to 15 or more. Everyone kind of depends on him to provide and to lead the games, but he'd like some of the others to share in those duties. He doesn't want to feel obligated to buy large group games all the time, and he feels that this is becoming more work than fun. So what should he do? Well, you can't always play a 15-player game. Um, so even though others may be reluctant to do so, you should push them to lead a game on their own. Right, and communication is going to be vital. So perhaps you can start a Facebook group or just a group text to let everyone know ahead of time what games are going to be available. And hey, if you're the one that's bringing the games, don't bring too many. Just give them a few choices. You decide. And because you can't lead every game, just be sure to go ahead and appoint leaders ahead of time and just really let them know that you need the help and be sure to show them that you appreciate the help once it's provided. Right, and another thing you can do is draw names to determine who's going to play what. That way your players don't get AP before the game even starts. And then the big thing is just the games that you do buy, make sure they're games that you want. Uh, whether they're 5 player or 20 player. Uh, you can get the games and then just split up the groups accordingly to the game itself. Hey, for right now, you may have to take the lead, but I think you'll find with proper communication and encouragement, you'll have certain people that will step up to the plate. Please continue to leave us questions in the comments or to email us right here on the screen. Hey, that's it for today's Fellowship of Meeples. We'll see you next time. All right, breakfast lovers, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We appreciate you watching Very much and so. uh, chatting it up in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you join us tomorrow. We're going to be doing a back talk uh, regarding back some of the talk. recent bestsellers, and we'll use some data to talk about that. So from tomorrow, May, 1 right? p.m. Eastern Standard. From May. From May. Yeah, bestsellers from so. May. So come on back for that if you want to yeah, hear about yeah. what's, what's hot, what's not. And uh, what you should get next, I guess, if you want to be one of the cool kids. All right, that's it for us for this breakfast. I'm Z Garcia. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.